Thank you. Uh, first and foremost, just thrilled to be here. An amazing venue and, and just, you know, awesome tradition here at Texas A&M. So just really proud and honored to be here. Um, equally proud of our ball club. Uh, we, we battled through a lot this year and really came together at the end of the year as a group collectively. And uh, with these two guys here on my left leading the way from a leadership standpoint, both on and off the field, uh, made for a great season that we're hoping is going to continue to get better. So really looking forward to getting back on the field and uh, playing baseball tomorrow. Opening it up for questions for the student athletes. Rich? We'll ask uh, Phil of this from uh, Minnesota because he's a two-way player. Do you are, do you know anything of him? And give you a little bit more emphasis to get on Phil with a guy like that who kind of does the same sort of thing you do. Pitches and... um, I, mean, I don't know much of, much about him. Um, you know, I know that Minnesota's got a really deep ball club all the way through. Um, so obviously, you know, one went down the field as soon as possible, you know, and play against a great team. And that's one of our, you know, one thing, you, you know, when you get to a regional, every team you play is going to be a really good team. You got to bring your, your best game every game or, you know, it's, it could end right there. So, um, so, you know, I'm looking forward, you know, to get on the field. You know, it's a great ball club and great players. How's the schedule, Will, that you guys have played in the ACC help prepare you for what you're going to see in this regional, especially if you get an opportunity? Face A&M out of the SEC. Um, you know, I think it's you know, ACC is very, you know, very hit, very, you know, strong. You know, one through I think one through fourteen, the team uh, ACC is very strong. We have, you know, for every Friday night, you're facing a guy who could possibly, you know, a potential high high draft pick. Um, even Saturday and Sunday, you're gonna be facing guys. You know, for instance, uh, I think UNC's got possible, you know, their Saturday guys possible top five pick. So I mean, that's not just UNC, but most other schools have, you know talent like that through their whole pitching uh, depth and same thing with the lineup and you know, every team you face has got a really good you know two or three players and you know some teams are a deep one through nine so I think you know ACC has really prepared us to face you know top pitching and top hitting um, sometimes it's at different, different weekends depending on who you play and sometimes it could be at the same time um, but overall I think you know they see has really prepared us to you know play a deep team like A&M and a deep team like Minnesota and even Binghamton as well so it's gonna be a fun week. Hitting in this, I mean, when they when they first announced this regional, that, that's the first thing they talked about. Was they said a lot of runs expected down yeah. the college station. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, we consider ourselves a pretty offensive club, and that's definitely what's carried us throughout these uh, past couple weeks, past month, probably. And then you look at A and M's lineup, one through nine is dangerous, and Minnesota's got really good numbers, so they'll throw a lot of left-handed hitters at you, which is dangerous in this ballpark, especially. We just took BP, and it kind of flies out to right, so. Yeah, we're expecting, you know, high-scoring games, but hopefully not uh, tomorrow when, when I'm on the mound. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're looking forward to it. We think our offense can compete with anybody, and if our pitching staff, you know, does a good job filling up the zone and keeping the ball down, we feel like we're going to be successful. When you know that, I mean, do you take a different approach when you go out on the mound knowing that there, there's going to be runs scored probably? Um, no, I just kind of try to stay with what I do because I feel like when I'm at my best, if I'm trusting my best stuff against theirs, I'm going to win most of the time if I execute. And so, yeah, you have to make adjustments based on the fact that they're going to have more lefties than I've probably faced in a while. But it's no different than facing Louisville, who had a bunch of lefties and all those guys have tough at bats. So, you know, I just try to st stick to my game plan and, um, you know, fill it up with with Velo and have good secondary pitches. And hopefully uh, with a good defense behind me, it will be pretty good. Opening it up to coach it. <laughs> Questions for the head coach as well. Coach, what do you think separates your team coming into this weekend uh, compared to the other teams? Um, <clears throat> well, our middle of the order. I mean, you look at our, our lineup, two through five, you know, Nate Mondu, Stuart Fairchild, Will Craig, Gavin Sheets. I just don't know if there's a better two through five stretch, um, you know, in the country that those guys are all going to play at a really high level and are, and are, you know, professionally, but are, but are performing at a high level right now. So, um, you know, in, in these types of, of tournaments, the team that comes in with the hot bats usually comes out and with those guys, two through two through five and, and even not that the guys around them, I mean, Joey Rodriguez and Kevin Conway has been swinging the bat really well. Benny Brazil had a good tournament. So, you know, one through nine, um, you know, we can hurt you from different spots in the lineup. 
up and we can beat you with power, we can beat you with speed, uh, we can walk, you know, so we just have a lot of different ways to beat you. But, you know, to me, that, that four-person stretch as a pitcher, two lefties, two righties, is just really hard to get through that stretch uh, one time, let alone two or three times to get yourself deep into a ball game. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking forward to them seeing how good Will and Parker are. Uh, you know, and you know, we we talk about Will a lot, and I think he's the best player in the country, and 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 certainly, um, you know, possibly, probably the best player that I've ever had. But you know, Parker Dunchy, when when our season was on the ropes, we had just gotten swept by NC State. We went to Parker and told him he needed to win out um, for us to get where we wanted to be, and he went out the next week against Florida State, beat them, beat Carolina the week after that, Boston College, Virginia Tech. You know, we probably should have won the Louisville game he pitched, and then he won the game in the conference tournament. So, you know, Dunch did what he needed to do to get us here. So, looking forward to the world seeing both these guys as well as our whole club. Everybody else has been asked this. I will ask you how you deal with the weather when, when the, the uh, there looks like there could be a lot of delays over the weekend. Yeah, that's not in our control. We talk to our players all the time about control, which you can control. Don't worry about things outside your control. Just focus on your task at hand. So we'll be ready to play. When they tell us to go, when they tell us to take the field, we'll be ready. And uh, we can't, you know, the weather isn't something that we're going to worry about. Have you had any times during the season where, you know, you had to have the, you know, the guys just sit out a couple hours and so they know what they like to do. Yeah, you know, that's that's part of college baseball. That's what makes our sport unique. I mean, in our league, you know, we've had teams miss four, as many as four conference games because of weather. Um, so there's there's weather on a lot of weekends in the spring. You know, you're going up to Boston College in April or Notre Dame in March, like we've done two out of the past three years. You know, you're going to run into weather. There's going to be delays. You're going to play double headers. You're going to have to start pitchers and then sit them down. So this is this is not new to us or, or any of these guys. I mean, this is part of college baseball. It's what makes us unique. As you said, that is that a good thing, depth in the pitching staff? Because there are times where, like, you might have a pitcher go for two or three innings and you can't get him back up to, to go when you restart the game. You have to go to somebody else. Yeah, that's certainly a big factor. And I know Coach Overton very well. He's in charge of this regional. He's not going to send starting pitchers out there unless, unless he thinks they can go, you know, five, six innings. I just, I don't think any coach wants to start a game and have his starter, his starting pitcher shut down after two innings. Obviously, you get into a time crunch when we get to Monday or Tuesday, then you might have to make different decisions like they did in the championship game of the ACC tournament. But, you know, as far as the early part of this tournament, I don't, I don't think that's going to be a factor because I know the folks here are going to make sure that the uh, starters are looked after. Tom, I know you're locked in on Minnesota, but what can you tell us about a &M? Really dynamic offensively, I mean, and, and playing really good baseball right now. I mean, obviously coming off of an SEC championship to get through that tournament um, in Hoover is no small task. And uh, obviously they have to be playing great baseball to have done that. And uh, you just, uh, we watched a lot of film on them and they can, they're, they're a very dynamic offensive club. That's the best word I can use to describe it. So you've got to be able to go out there and pitch and, and make pitches against them because if you make mistakes, if you give them free bases, um, then it's going to come back to uh, to haunt you. So, um, you know, hopefully we can get through this first game, and if they get through theirs, we'll match up in the in the night game on Saturday. Um, we're looking forward to that matchup very much. Time for about one or two more. <coughs> we know the SEC. What you just said, can you compare that to an ACC team? You know what A and M's lineup is like. And yeah, I mean, it, like Parker said, it compares to Louisville's just with the left-handed hitters they have. Compares a little bit probably to ours um, just because they can beat you at different parts of their lineup. They've got power up and down their lineup. I mean, in our league, you know, the, the ACC is kind of more of a pitching-dominant league. In, in, my, in my opinion, you don't have a lot of um, super dynamic offensive clubs, but certainly Louisville's one of those clubs. Clemson has a pretty good lineup, one through nine. You know, Florida State at, at times, um, you know, can be that way, so... You know, again, playing in a venue like this, is, as was mentioned before, I mean, we see that every weekend of the ACC. We're playing it at Clemson, Florida State, Virginia. You know, those are all places like this and against teams like this, teams that are used to winning, teams that are used to going to Omaha. So this is going to be old hat for us. All right. Well, uh, 